These are units of new home construction. And the total of both multifamily units under construction, apartment buildings and such, and single family units was at an all time high, higher than the record from 1973. And this is when baby boomers were entering adulthood for the first time. And a lot of first time buyers existed stimulating all this construction, mostly apartments at that time. As they got older, single family homes became what's constructed. Now that construction spending is going down, we are seeing only single family homes go down in terms of number of units under construction while multifamily is still rising because there have been very recent legislation passings that increase the amount of incentives for multifamily home construction. In California in particular, there's a law called AB 2097 that eliminates parking requirements for housing construction near public transportation because Due to this work from home revolution that I speak about often on this channel, a lot of public transportation networks have only 35 to 50% of their pre-COVID usage, notably BART in the Bay Area, as well as the New York City subway system. And city and state governments do not want public transportation systems to go bankrupt, so they would rather increase housing supply to build a lot of apartments near public transportation in the hopes of getting more usage of public transportation. This increases supply a lot. And while single family homes are going down, multifamily home construction is rising. This is also a function of changing demographics in the United States. Two parent families are becoming a smaller and smaller fraction of all adults household structure. More and more people are just single. And therefore you don't have the single family suburban home in as much demand anymore because of people migrating to apartment living or living in high rise buildings. Work from home makes this easier because if you're an apartment renter, you can move to where rent is less expensive a lot more easily than someone who's anchored into a mortgage house. But it was expensive pre COVID because people needed to commute to jobs based on the location of the jobs relative to that house. And when that burden is greatly reduced, then housing prices become vulnerable. No amount of Federal Reserve mortgage backed security buying can mitigate that because this is an atom disruption. The expensive suburban single family home in the United States might be facing the same situation that OPEC faced after getting too greedy from 2007 to 2014 and assuming oil could be $100 a barrel forever. That bubble was punctured by the atom, by the technonomic medium of the world that found a substitution source as well as a way to decrease demand. And now oil can never get above $100 a barrel for any sustained period of time, even though in GDP adjusted terms, $100 a barrel is a lot lower than it was in 2007 through 2014. So relative to the S&P 500, commodity prices are much lower. And the same is going to happen to housing. Housing is a commodity in that sense. And the Zoom telework revolution has turned housing into a more commodity-like status where people can seek less expensive rent because they don't have to go to the office every day. Even if they have to go only once or twice a week, they can live three times further away from their office, thereby expanding the choice of their housing by a huge amount. Twice the commute distance means four times the land area of choice. And therefore the Federal Reserve is truly cornered in terms of at least the housing market. No matter how many mortgage backed securities they buy, they will only stimulate the construction of more and more housing, which itself has a situation similar to what fracking did to oil prices in that the supply increase effectively is faster than any amount of money printing to restore people from a situation of negative equity. Nothing that OPEC can do can keep oil above $100 a barrel anymore at all. And I suspect exactly the same thing is going to happen to housing. Another example of the same thing happening to a different asset type was the New York City taxi medallions which got too greedy and tried to keep the price too high for too long. And then a substitution effect came in. You can see that story in this video up here. I suspect the same thing is going to happen to at least the expensive single family housing that exists in many cities in America, particularly in proportion to the zoning tax. I'll go to our final chart of this video. Remember this zoning tax chart? It is a measure of how the local restrictions of a particular city constrict the natural inclination for the free market to increase housing supply, thereby making home prices much more expensive than they would be under a free market type of allowance. San Francisco and Los Angeles are the two worst because if housing construction were allowed in proportion to demand, housing prices would easily be only 
one-fifth what they are in San Francisco and maybe one-fourth of what they are in Los Angeles. The fact that housing supply is kept to a tiny fraction of what is needed and what the free market would like it to be has made housing very expensive there. But again, this dam has broken under the Zoom telework revolution. We read stories all the time of people moving out of San Francisco while still working at their technology company job that is a high-paying job, but now living far away where not just housing is inexpensive, but possibly across state lines in Nevada where even the tax rates are much lower. And this process is only accelerating because work from home is becoming more normalized and that technology is advancing and therefore this Federal Reserve mortgage-backed security buying practice to save people from negative equity is really trying to fill a sieve with water. And this is going to be quite fascinating because there's a huge amount of technological deflation that is going to be released from here that's going to mandate more money printing but a different and better type of money printing cash sent directly to people because mortgage-backed security buying has become tantamount to OPEC trying to reduce reduce oil production to keep oil prices high, assuming that no substitution effect could ever occur. Substitution did occur for oil demand, and now substitution is occurring for housing demand, particularly in cities where housing was made very artificially expensive in the first place. In cities that have no zoning tax, they have much less to worry about, but still a little bit to worry about because people can work from home over there as well, thereby increasing housing choice, particularly when these cities are smaller and you can live out in a rural area and still have a big city high paying job now when you don't have to go in every day. So I hope that these charts in combination painted a picture of an era we are about to go into very shortly. When mortgage rates are this high, we are on the brink of a housing bust and it will take on very different characteristics relative to the previous one because the PhD economists have not adapted to new types of tools of mitigation. In fact, they have overused the tools that staved off the previous crisis, but now they have merely moved the problem from one place to another and cornered themselves. Now, if you find this type of content interesting, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.